Boom! What's happening, guys? Forrest here, Cichlid Man 09. It is sit down in front of a tank with the tripod. Got a new tripod, by the way. Very happy, excited about that. So, it's Q&A time. How is everybody doing? Welcome to the video. If you're new, you send questions to my cichlidman09 at gmail.com account. That's the, uh, that's the email address. Send questions over there. I look at them. If they're cool, we'll get them in a the video. And uh, just a great time for us to chill, hang out, answer some questions, have a little bit of fun while we do it. So, question number one. Probably going to do a couple Q&A videos today because I've been doing pretty lazy at uh, getting videos out for you guys. You guys have been doing a great job sending me good questions, and when I get good questions, I want to save them for videos, and when I take a long time to make a video, it makes it seem like I'm being a lazy butt, but uh, I actually have been a little lazy. So, back to question number one. Question is from Ryan. What is going on, Ryan? Hey, Forrest, what's up? No, not much, doing a video. I was wondering how you get in the gorilla's tank to do water changes or do any maintenance on it with the couch in the way. Thanks, you're welcome. Next question. Wait, didn't answer it. So, it's a very intricate system. Uh, what I've done is I cut a hole in the ceiling above the fish room, lead to the, to the top of the house. And I've got a series of pulleys and a harness that I strap myself into. And what I do is I've got an automated robot thing that cranks it cranks it like that and it lowers me down like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible what I do is I go from up there and then I just gravel back and stuff and I'm just hanging like a bat might have to do a video about it someday but uh, it's not a real thing basically what I do is uh, the couch is in the way yes I move it to another location and then I put my little step stool over there it's not as fun but uh does the job. Sorry, I didn't have a cool and exciting way to do that, so I decided to make one up. Thanks for the question, Ryan. Next question. Next question. Lost track of where I was. And we're here, and we're back. This is from Andrew. What's going on, Andrew? Hey, Forrest. I already asked you what's going on. Conversation's already begun. I have two questions for you. I have a 29 gallon aquarium that is full and has fish. Full and has fish, important. Do you have any tips on how to paint the back without totally draining it? Yes, we'll get to that in a second. Also, does that Y adapter for the stretchy hose work on almost all bathroom faucets? Question mark. I have carpet in my room and need to build one. Thanks for any advice, hyphen Drew. Thanks for the question, Drew. As far as painting your tank, as long as you're not using spray paint, and I'll emphasize that again, spray paint, because when you spray it, all those little paint particles float up into the air and uh, land on any surface adhering, and thus the color of that paint ends up on that surface. But if you've got like some latex paint or something that you just want to like roll on, heck yeah, just make sure your tank's covered. Um, and uh, you really shouldn't have any issues at all. Um, Maybe a little tape to make it clean, this and that. But if your tank's covered, you're not dripping paint directly into your aquarium. You have access to the back of your tank, so you don't have to worry about maneuvering it back and forth and spinning and turning. Uh, then really, it shouldn't have any issues uh, as long as you're painting it on. If you're spray painting it, my suggestion is to take the fish out, take everything out, take it outside or in a very well-ventilated paint room, and uh, then paint it, do all that stuff. But yeah, if you're just rolling paint it, Eat peasy, lemon squeezy, right? And the second question, the Y adapter for the, it does that fit all bathroom faucets? Now, I'm gonna discuss a little bit in terms of how that works. I discussed it in the last video, we're gonna do it again. Repetition is the best way to do things multiple times, right? Yes. Okay, so, the Y adapter is actually just has hose fittings on it. That's the actual adapter. There's actually two pieces to that Y situation. There's a piece, the more important piece is an adapter that goes from a faucet with the little tiny grooves and the spirals to a hose bar uh, adapter, whatever the heck it's called. It allows it to screw into your bathroom faucet with having the other end 
able to screw in with a hose. So then you can just get a Y adapter like I got, which you can find easily at any um, hardware store, Walmart, wherever, garden section. Just go to a garden section, there'll be something there. It's got the little valves on it, probably a couple bucks, cheap. Um, but the important thing is to have that adapter that goes from your sink to a uh, hose so that you can just, if you wanted to, I, I could easily just take that Y thing off of there and uh, just screw the garden hose, the uh, pocket hose onto that. Um, that's the important piece. Um, you find that, usually you can find it at most local fish stores. I'll actually put a link like I did in the last video um, to, uh, to find one on eBay just to kind of give you guys a place to go. So if you want to get one, go get one. But uh, that'll make it so you can just, and it should fit. They're pretty, pretty universal. They don't make them to be exclusive. Do, 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 do. Next question from Nelson. What is going on, Nelson? He says, Mr. Forrest. So I said that loud because there's two exclamation points. Easily the most down-to-earth fish guy on YouTube. Thank you very much. I take that as a compliment because that's how I want to feel. I just need it. Hanging out. All right. I'm just a few years older than you. I always feel like I'm just hanging out with one of my boys rather than watching a video. That is the whole goal behind this situation. Is uh, my videos, there's no rhyme or reason. It's just let's hang out, right? Because there's only so many purposeful videos you can make about this hobby. There's only so much purpose you can do. There's only so many projects you can do. There's only so many fish you can get. Not, nobody else is really just, let's just chill. Just chill. Hang out. No purpose. So I appreciate that. I'm glad that comes through my videos because that's what I want to be the uh, situation. So here's my question. Your fish are pretty damn huge, especially Hulk and Azul. They're getting there. Hulk's about full grown. Azul's still got some growings to do. Exciting stuff. Um, have either of them or any fish, I guess, ever taken a nip slash bite at you while doing a water change or doing any maintenance on your tank? If so, did it hurt at all? Yes, I have been bit. No, it is not fun. Um, Hulk used to bite me back when he was probably in that eight inch range when he was just getting angry, angry fish. He was a pissed off little sucker. He, how he is now is actually dialed back than how he was probably six months ago. Um, now in the aquarium, when I'm in the fish tank, he doesn't even touch me. He doesn't bother me at all. It's fantastic. I love it. We've seen to struck some kind of equilibrium where, hey, you're helping me. I'm helping you by not trying to kill you. Uh, just get my tank clean, you know. Just, I'm like his cleaning lady, you know. While she's in the in in the kitchen cleaning up, he's you know in the living room watching some sports. You know, we we've struck an equilibrium and it's fantastic. But he used to bite me. Uh, I let him bite me once on camera. I think it made me bleed. But um, and uh, my old jag pair that I had way back, way back, um, old videos on uh, those guys were psycho. Especially the male. He was freaking jumping everywhere. <laughs> And, um, yeah, and uh, fish bite, the closest thing I can resemble it to, because when they bite, they do this little tail flip thing, is that little uh, involuntary jolt that you get when you get electrocuted. Like, when you touch a little, you know, all of us have plugged in something while touching the prongs, like the smart people that we are. That little involuntary thing is what it feels like, because it just, boom, hits you, and it's like, what the heck just happened? If anything, it scares the living crap out of you because they are so wicked fast. They're wicked fast. Um, they come and hit you, and then they're gone like nothing. But uh, and they will leave some scars. But if anything, the, the only you make more of a mess when you like rip your arm out of the tank when a fish bites you, the water splashes everywhere. Then when they just there's like a little mark, and you're like ah, wimp. Hashtag wimp. But yeah, been bit, not fun. Um, Unless you're preparing for it. If you're ready for it, it's like nothing. But if you're not ready for it, you almost pee your pants. Bonus question. Yes, love bonus questions. NCAA basketball fan, question mark, question mark. What is your final four if you have a bracket going? Never, ever made a bracket. Never going to make a bracket. I'm sorry to all of you NCAA fans out there uh, who watch the basketball. You might have unsubscribed when I say this. I hate March Madness. I hate it. I can't stand it. Uh, college sports. Um, I like college football when it gets around bowl season when good is playing good. But uh, it's and you know Final Four championship game in the NCAA. I'll absolutely watch it. In terms of setting up a bracket and trying to follow all 64 teams and who's going to be who and this and that and Patino and this guy and Duke. Um, 
I have a really hard time. I have a hard time, like, if I don't know what's going on fully in the sport, uh, unless it's like a championship match, because, like, I'll watch Wimbledon, I'll, I'll watch the finals, the French Open, Wimbledon, I'll watch the Masters. Golf's another story. I'll watch all four days of golf. But, um, you know, when it's best on best championship game situation, I'll basically watch any sport. But uh, in terms of NCAA basketball, I have a hard time following it. There's too much going on. Too many teams. Once you get down to eight, lead eight, I'll start, I'll start watching. Um, I'll probably start watching now that they're narrowing it down to the final four. But I've never made a bracket, never been into NCAA basketball. Fantastic athletes. Those guys are younger than me and just freaking crazy, insane. And uh, it's fun to watch. Um, I'm a huge NBA, NBA basketball fan. I love the NBA. I love basketball. I just, for some reason, college basketball just doesn't, doesn't grab me. Doesn't, there's not a whole lot of, I don't know, college there seems to be a lot of displaced talent, like good against terrible. And, uh, you know, until you get down to the last little bit of the teams left, you're really just playing, it's, there's, there's always so much of an imbalance. And I know you see that a, a little bit in professional sports, but not as much. Um, that's why NFL is so amazing, because there's such a, you know, with the exception of like the two bad teams, um, there's such a level playing field for the most part. And every team, any team could win any day. But um, yeah, NCAA, not for me. Not saying it's terrible, but it's, it's really not for me. Last question for today, so this video isn't three hours long is from Song. Uh, I believe I said that right. Hi Forrest, my name is Song. I have a lovely four foot fish tank with all sort of freshwater fish and I've had them for about a year and a half. But the question I wanted to ask you is how do you know if your fish are overweight? Now, it's a very topical question because I actually, three years ago, I invented this product. And uh, basically what you do is you take, uh, I don't have any on because uh, that in a second. So you take it and you wrap it around the fish and then you get a ladder and then you go up on your roof and then on the ground you take one of your five gallon buckets, any normal one will do, it doesn't have to be the ones we, uh, we made, but um, you take your five gallon bucket, you take the fish um, out of the tank of course and then you with the thing wrapped around it and you throw it 30 feet up in the air and what it does is it splashes down in the tank and what that does is as soon as it lands in that bucket all of these readings are taken by this bell because it's very, very advanced technology. And so that sends the results to Singapore. And then what Singapore does is it sends the results to New York. And uh, basically what, what ended up happening is um, when it got sent to New York, they realized this wasn't a real thing. And uh, they decided to just throw the results away. So all the results I ever had uh, were, were garbage uh, and uh, never, never really got sent all the way back to me because there was like 32 different checkpoints. And uh, at the second one in New York, uh, things just kind of kind of went astray. So, and that would have told you the readings, you know, the weight to mass and the BMI and this and that. Basically, okay. I'll admit none of that was real. I'm a pathological liar. So, the great thing about the internet and YouTube and all of this fantastical wealth of knowledge is that um, there's a pretty good photographical library of every fish that you basically can get. So. What you do, and if you want to know if your fish is fat, is you just compare to all the rest of these pictures and videos of fish, and you know if the norm is this, which is usually going to be a well-formed fish, and your fish has got some slumps and stuff growing in other places, there's probably uh, some stuff going on. Overfeeding, and this gets into this this topic right here. Overfeeding is probably one of the worst um, abused things in this hobby with right hand in hand with not doing water changes and um, you know we all do it I've done it I probably do it still um, the best thing for your fish honestly is to just skip a couple days not feed all the time you don't have to necessarily feed less of the time just feed less often so um, to in the end prevent your fish from getting fat um, Hulk's not fat I say he's going on a diet because he's fat because he's at that age where he doesn't need all these excess nutrients all that excess nutrients would be going to his organs and Fatty deposits growing here, fatty deposits going there, and if I fed him, power feed him all the, all the time, every day, in six months, he's going to look gross. He's going to look disgusting. There's going to be proportions in places that aren't supposed to be. 
For right now, he's actually proportioned pretty well. He's a big fish. They're thick fish. Amphilophus are thick fish. But, um, you know, it's basically an eye test when you're, when you're guessing to see if your fish are fat. Um, and uh, a good way to prevent that and not have to perform an eye test to say, is my fish overweight, is to just kick back your feedings a little bit. Notice that as your fish grows, they're going to stop growing. Um, no fish ever really stops growing, but in terms of, you know, boom, boom, inch a month type of thing, that slows way the heck down to like 16th of an inch of uh, every six months, you know. They still continue to grow, but, um, you know, you don't necessarily need to be feeding all these high nutrient dense, fat laden, protein laden foods all the time. Um, and, you know, my advice to people out there who want to prevent fat fish is uh, to skip a couple days a week, you know. If instead of feeding seven days a week, feed five days a week because in the end, no matter what you're feeding, how often you're feeding anything else, that food adds up to a total. As people, you know, weight loss comes as simple to is how much weight, how much calories are you burning and how many calories are you intaking. If you burn more than you intake, you're going to lose weight. If you eat more than you burn, you're either going to gain weight or stay the same if you found some kind of equilibrium somewhere. But, uh, you know, in the end, as long as the total amount of food that your fish is consuming ends up being less um, and not going way overboard and just pounding them with food left and right, they're going to be doing just fine and uh, have a good time and live a long time. So, uh, so you can join them as long as possible because that's, that's, that's the end goal here is to enjoy these fish until whatever happens 15 years down the road. As you guys may not know, these fish can live 15, 20 years. Um, you don't see that very often in the hobby because people don't change water and people feed way too much. But, uh, you know, if you change water and don't feed too much, you fish have a potential to live a long time. And uh, that concludes our Q&A today. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. I appreciate it every time, every single person out there clicks on my video to view it, clicks on that like button. By the way, if you did, hit that thumbs up. Um, comment if you've got something to say down in the comments below. If you're new and you're not subscribed, what the heck is going on? And just hit that subscribe button, click it. And um, yeah, go over to the Sickle Man on my Facebook page, like the page, go check it out. I'm gonna do a second Q&A today. I'm gonna be getting Q&As left and right. Thanks for joining me. Catch you guys on the flippity flip flop flip. Thank <laughs> you.